Go over there. Search. Cops, that way. Sister Fu. Sister Fu, open the door. Are the police here to arrest people? Sister Jeng, what about your church? They captured three of our deacons, and some brothers and sisters were arrested. <sighs> More than 20 at our Deshing church were arrested. Our meeting place raided. <sighs> our Shengcheng church was the same. I was lucky to escape. I don't know how many brothers and sisters were captured. <sighs> These cops are like bandits. They've no regard for the law. Yeah, bandits. Yes, thanks to Brother Yan's timely warning. Several deacons at our church managed to hide. Thanks, thanks be to, to the Lord. Lord. However, some could not be contacted in time and were arrested. Several meeting places were raided. The cops turned our homes upside down. They took away anything that was valuable. They are simply robbers. Yeah. The CCP captures and persecutes Christians. <sighs> It's happened many times over the years. Yeah. Yes. Our hearts will soon break. That's right. Indeed. Yeah. Who, Who is, is it? Who is it? It's me. Oh, it's Brother Lee. You made it. Thanks be to the Lord. Brother Lee, take a seat. Where is Elder Wong? He's been arrested. Arrested? arrested? <gasps> what happened? Please tell us. It's just last night, armed police raided our village. The police stormed straight into Elder Wang's home, raiding his home, seizing people like demons. They are loathsome. They've always been like yeah. this. I wanted to warn others, but it was too late, so I could only hide. I found out this morning, more than 30 from our church were captured. The raid was similar to last time, coordinated by armed police. Yeah. The CCP captures believers in the middle of the night. It's impossible to defend against. Yes, you're right. Yes. It's impossible. Yes. They grab Christians at night to avoid being spotted and angering the masses. The CCP is too cunning. Yes, they are evil. Hmm. Persecution has increased since Xi Jinping came to power. He is also a demon. He is oh, yes, that's person. right. Now, the CCP is trying to ban house churches. It's malicious. Indeed. The arrests of Christians in house churches have gotten even more outrageous. No matter who is in charge, the CCP is a God-resisting demon. Yes. They are all the same. They are all God's enemies. They seem to have vowed to eradicate the church. I fear we can no longer meet. No meetings? Is that okay? No. It's widely known. We believe in the Lord. If we're captured, we'll be tormented to death. I live in fear every day. Belief in the Lord is righteous. Yet, why must I act like a thief? Yes. When will these days end? I feel we should lay low and not meet for a little while. Is that the Lord's will? It is not. The Lord Jesus said, Be you therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. This is wisdom. It's not cowardice. I think the CCP's persecution of Christians won't stop. It will only get worse. It's true. Belief in the Lord in China requires wisdom. Yes. I also think hiding for a while is in line with the Lord's will. That's right. 
I fear that those who've been captured will spend years in prison unless they sign a letter of repentance. Those prisons are a living hell. There's no guarantee they'll survive. Yeah. It's too terrifying. Brothers and sisters, God's good intentions are contained in the persecution that befalls us. As believers, we must suffer the persecution. Through the CCP's persecution, God's testing people and perfecting our faith. Yeah. So when we encounter persecution, we should be cautious and wise, but not afraid. God is almighty. Our lives are within God's hands. Yes, yes absolutely, absolutely right. right. Though we live under Satan's domain, without God's permission, Satan does not dare to take our lives. Yes. yes. If we hide from fear of being sent to prison and become hesitant, afraid of death, and scared to work for him, then how can we bear witness to the Lord? Indeed. We'd be exposed and eliminated through being tried. Indeed. The cowardly are not worthy of entering God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. Therefore, the more the CCP persecutes us, the more we should have faith and loyalty to the Lord. Amen. Amen. And water brothers and sisters. Mm. Thus, we can have true testimonies. Yes. 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 And enter the kingdom of heaven when the Lord descends with the clouds. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to the Lord. Lord. And when that happens, all the persecution will be over. Indeed. Indeed. Thanks be to God. As the Lord Jesus said, And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Amen. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draws near. Amen. Amen. Praise oh, the Lord. how I long for that the day. The Lord's faithful. These words It'll be sure fulfilled. fulfilled. Yes. With such a bad environment, it's inevitable that believers have some fear in their hearts. What's most important now is to think of ways to support them. Yes, mm, right. it's a matter of urgency. Lead others to pray and read the Bible so they will understand the Lord's will. It's true. That way, we'll stand the testimony for the Lord through the trials. Amen. Amen. Thanks be Thanks to the Lord. Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to the Lord. Lord. Yes, we should. We should mm -hmm. support our brothers and sisters. This is a mm, test right. to us all. Sister Ha, since undergoing the CCP's crackdown, how are the brothers and sisters doing? Most are feeling scared and weak. Seeing brothers and sisters like this. No matter how scared and weak they may feel, as co-workers, we first must be strong and care for the Lord's will. It's so. Only then can we support brothers and sisters. Yes. Sister Fu, to be honest, since the CCP government's crackdown, we would have collapsed had we not prayed to the Lord. Hmm. Even now, we have not recovered from it. <sighs> Sister Ha, what you say is quite true. I've also gotten through the CCP's persecution and arrests through praying to the Lord. Thank the Lord. I could not have stood firm without the Lord's words and his promise as well. Indeed, we have all relied on the Lord. Sister Fu, I have a dilemma and would like your advice. Sure, tell me about it. All these years, we've looked forward to entering the kingdom of heaven, but the Lord still hasn't come. When will there be an end to this suffering? We always say the Lord has arrived at the door, but yet he still has not come. Our faith has become quite weak. It's 2016 now. The prophecies of his return are basically fulfilled. The four blood moons appeared. Even non-believers know that the great disaster is imminent. 
Therefore, the Lord should have returned. So how is it that we still have not welcomed him? Yeah. I'm uneasy about this in my heart. If we keep watching the skies and waiting for the Lord to descend with the clouds, will we ever really meet him? Yeah. The CCP government's crackdown is getting much worse. Our homes do not feel like homes. And who knows when we will be sent to prison. How much longer do we have to endure this suffering? <sighs> we long for the Lord to take us to heaven and end this suffering. The disaster is nearly here, and yet the Lord hasn't come. Just what is going on? Yeah. Don't we all long for his arrival? Yet the Lord still hasn't come. Who can see through this? We've now all seen disasters getting bigger and bigger. The four blood moons have appeared. Indeed. Fulfilling the prophecy in the book of Joel. And also on the servants and on the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. Amen. I've been thinking about this prophecy. The appearance of the four blood moons fulfills the moon into blood. Plus the prophecy says, before the great and terrible day of the Lord come. I feel the great and terrible day might refer to the great disaster. Oh. And also on the servants and on the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. These words show what God will do just before the arrival of the great disaster. Yes, that does sound right. That's how I receive this prophecy that before the start of the great disaster, God's Spirit will utter words to water his servants and handmaids. Mm. I believe the Holy Spirit will do new work in the last days. Oh, this is a new light. Thanks be to the Lord. Thank the Lord. Here, the words uttered by God's Spirit and the Holy Spirit's words to the churches in the book of Revelation seem to be related. Hmm. Many Bible experts confirm that God will make a group of overcomers before the great disaster. Mm. Here is what I think. The utterance of God's Spirit must relate to God making a group of overcomers. Mm. In God's eyes, overcomers are all God's servants and handmaids. Thank the Lord. So that's how it is. Right. The more I pondered, the more I thought there's a great mystery here. If that's the case, we should now search for the utterances of God's Spirit and see where the words of the Holy Spirit to the churches appear. Oh, right. Oh, you remind me of the Lord Jesus' prophecy. The wise virgins went to the wedding banquet when they heard the bridegroom's voice. As I see it, we should find the work of the Holy Spirit and see where the footprints of God's work are. This is most important. Yes. yes. What you've said is the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. Fantastic. Thanks yeah. be to the Lord. You say the utterance of God's Spirit refers to the Holy Spirit's words to the churches. This reminds me that the Eastern Lightnings already witnessed the return of the Lord as Almighty God, who has expressed many truths and commenced the work of judgment and is now making overcomers. Do you think... This is related to God's spirit, watering God's servants and handmaids? If that's the case, then we really have a path. Let's investigate if the Eastern Lightning really is God's work. That settles it. Yeah, we should look into it at once. Brother Fung, what you said today is indeed a new light. Praise the Lord. This is something we'd never appreciated in the Bible before. Yes, thank the Lord. But as for 
whether the Eastern Lightning really is the work of God, my views are thus. The Eastern Lightning says that the Lord Jesus has returned, expressed truths, and done judgment of the last days. How is this possible? The Lord Jesus clearly prophesied that he would descend with the clouds in the last days. Yet we have not seen the Lord take believers into the kingdom of heaven. How could the Lord Jesus have already returned? Besides, religious pastors and leaders often say, all of the Lord's work is in the Bible. There are no words or work of the Lord outside of the Bible. Therefore, our belief in the Lord is belief in the Bible. If we stray from the Bible, then we betray the Lord. No matter what, we must hold on to the Bible and the Lord's name. Thus, we'll be brought to the kingdom of heaven when he comes. Sister Fu, on welcoming the Lord, we listen to pastors and elders and wait for the Lord to descend with the clouds. And if any say that the Lord's already returned, we reject it without investigating. This is not what the Lord intends. Recently, I started wondering. There are so many good sheep from all sects who've accepted the Eastern Lightning. Most of them understand the Bible and are rather thoughtful, insightful people. Yeah. Their acceptance of the Eastern Lightning must have come only after investigating it many times. Yes, they would not have accepted it blindly. Therefore, we should seek and investigate the Eastern Lightning. If the Eastern Lightning is the Lord's appearance, won't we be able to meet the Lord? Yeah. If the Eastern Lightning is not the return of the Lord, we'd still gain discernment. Isn't that quite a good thing? Indeed. Rather than being trapped in the church with nowhere to go, we might as well investigate the Eastern Lightning. Yeah. Let's see if the Lord has already returned. At least we know how things stand. Right. Sister Fu, isn't that right? We should look into it. Yes. Sister Fu, we have waited and waited, but still the Lord has not come. Just what is going on? Thanks be to the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to the, to the Lord. Lord. Brothers and sisters, now is the late period of the last days. Mm. The prophecies of the Lord's return are basically fulfilled. Amen. In the year 2000, the Lord may descend with the clouds to take us up into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Yes, this is so exciting. Oh, Lord, is it wrong for us to wait for you like this? Why is it that we still have not met you? Lord, the Eastern Lightning testifies that you have returned. Is this true or not? Oh, Lord, I really am not sure. Please, enlighten me. Sister Fu, what you said is right. The prophecies will surely come to pass. But recently, I checked all the prophecies regarding the return of the Lord. About the Lord's prophecies of His return. It not only says, He comes with clouds and every eye shall see Him, but also that He will come as a thief. Right. As is said in the Gospel of Matthew 24, 43 through 44, But know this, that if the manager of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up.
Yes, yes it, it was, was so. so. Therefore, be you also ready. For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. Mm. There's also Revelation 3.3. 3. If therefore you shall not watch, I will come on you as a thief. These prophecies say the Lord will come as a thief. He will come quietly, without everyone knowing. Yeah. Therefore, when it comes to the return of the Lord, we mustn't make assumptions, but rather seek and investigate fully. That's the only way we'll have a chance to welcome him. We must investigate more. Yes. Brother Fung, there are many prophecies that the Lord will return like a thief. But the religious world unanimously interprets this as not knowing when the Lord will return. Right. Just as the Lord Jesus said, For in such an hour as you think not, the Son of Man comes. In my mind, this is saying that when no one expects it, the Lord will descend with the clouds to take the saints. That sounds about right. Now that you say it, this reminds me of when I was hiding at my relative's house. I met some people from the Eastern Lightning. The, the Eastern, Eastern Lightning? Lightning? Yes. They communed with me on some prophecies. Like Revelation 16, 15, Behold, I come as a thief. And also Matthew 25, 6. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him, as well as Revelation 3.20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. According to their interpretation of the Lord's words, he shall return like a thief, and it will be at midnight when someone witnesses the bridegroom comes. This explains that at a time unknown to us all, God will become flesh as Son of Man and secretly descend to speak and work. It is not something that all can see or know. Only those who know the Lord's voice can recognize that He's the Lord and accept Him. Indeed, it's so. They also said only those who seek the Lord's voice when told someone's witnessed His return can be brought before the throne to attend the Lord's banquet. Ah, what they said is right. The Lord Jesus said clearly in these passages, not everyone will be able to see the Lord's return. Only those who recognize His voice are able to meet Him. If the Lord's return is the descend with the clouds that we imagine, then wouldn't all be able to see it? Yes. Mm. Yes. It mm. seems. There's a mystery in how the Lord will come. Mm -hmm. Sister Zhu, from hearing your words, it seems what was said by those from the Eastern Lightning conforms with the Lord's prophecies. Mm. The Lord Jesus' prophecies indeed mention listening to the Lord's voice. Right. We must listen to His voice in order to be able to welcome His return. Right. All that you have said makes sense. We held to the Lord descending with the clouds, but ignored other prophecies of His return. Mm, right. This made it easy to make mistakes. Mm. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but not a stroke of the Lord's words shall. Right. right. Since they're all the Lord's prophecies, they must all be fulfilled. His words yeah. will not be unfulfilled. As to how the Lord's prophecies will be fulfilled, there must be mysteries and truths mm. that we're unable to fathom. Mm. Indeed. Yes, that's true. We mustn't arbitrarily delineate. Yeah. yeah. Over these years, the Eastern Lightning has testified that the Lord has returned, uttered the truth, and begun His judgment work of the last days. Mm. And yet, we have never sought and looked into it. It's true. Right. Right. But instead, followed pastors and elders in condemning the Eastern Lightning. Indeed. That's Indeed. true. 
from the look of things, what we were doing may be quite wrong. Yeah. We should now investigate the Eastern Lightning to see whether what they preach is the true way. Yes, we should seek and investigate. Yeah. yeah. Sister Zhu. Yes? Can you invite people from the Church of Almighty God to come communicate with us? Oh, yes. We should seek and investigate. If I may introduce everyone, the Church of Almighty God's Brother Li, Brother Chen, and Sister Zhang. Here's our church's Elder Fu. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. We welcome you to our church. Welcome to our church. Welcome to our church. Please sit. Thanks be to the Lord. We invited you here to help us study Almighty God's work in the last days. Praise, Praise God. God. We have long heard the Church of Almighty God has testified to the return of the Lord Jesus, who is Almighty God. Mm, yes. yes. He has begun his judgment work of the last days. Yes. But most people think the Lord will return by descending with the clouds. Mm. This is because the Lord Jesus clearly said, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Amen. Amen. The book of Revelation prophesied, Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him. And all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. Amen. I too think he'll return by descending with the clouds to take us to the kingdom of heaven. We refuse to accept the Lord Jesus, who doesn't thus descend. That is why we've never investigated the Eastern Lightning. Yes. yes. You say his return is returning to flesh and descending in secret. But none know about this. But the Lord descending with the clouds is absolute. Amen. Amen. That's why we wait for the Lord to descend with the clouds and take us up directly to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Indeed. Is our understanding correct or not? Please speak to us on this. Yes, sure. Yes. Thanks be to God. How could we be wrong? Praise the Lord. Everyone, our view cannot be wrong. Yes, that's right. The Lord is faithful. I believe... He will descend with the clouds to take us to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. The Bible also prophesies, He'll come as a thief, and someone will yell, The bridegroom comes at midnight. Of this, we cannot seek or investigate. That's, That's right. That's right. False Christs will appear in the last days. We are afraid of being deceived. So I only believe in the Lord Jesus who descends with the clouds. This cannot be wrong. Amen. I will not accept unless the Lord descends with the clouds taking believers to the kingdom of heaven. Yes, we cannot accept it. That's my view. Amen. Brother Jah's right. That's what I think, too. Amen. Amen. Everyone, when it comes to waiting for the Lord to descend with the clouds, we can't trust our notions. That's right. The Pharisees made a huge mistake in waiting for the Messiah's arrival. True. They used man's notions against the Lord Jesus who had already arrived. In the end, they nailed the Lord Jesus to the cross. Is this not a fact? Yeah. Is awaiting the Lord's arrival as simple as we think? If the Lord returns and He works among mankind just as the Lord Jesus in the flesh had done, and we don't recognize him, then would we also judge and condemn him as the Pharisees had done, and so crucify him again? Is this a possibility? <sighs> That's something we never thought of before. That's true. The Lord Jesus said many words about his return. But you only hold the one where he descends with the clouds, 
and don't investigate the other prophecies spoken by the Lord. This makes it easy to walk down the wrong path and be abandoned by the Lord. The descend with the clouds prophecy is not the only one in the Bible. There's others, like he'll come as a thief and descend secretly. Yeah. As in Revelation 16.15. Revelation 16. Behold, I come as a thief. Matthew 25.6. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. And Revelation 3.20 Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. All these prophecies refer to God becoming flesh as the Son of Man and descending in secret. As a thief means coming quietly, secretly. Right. None will know he's God, even if they hear or see him. Just as it was when the Lord Jesus first appeared. The Lord Jesus looked like a son of man, and no one knew he is God. The Lord Jesus used as a thief analogously for the son of man's appearance. This is quite befitting. Those who do not love the truth, regardless of how God incarnate speaks or works, do not accept. Instead, they treat God incarnate as if he were a normal person and condemn and abandon him. That's why the Lord Jesus prophesied that when he returns, for as the lightning that lightens out of the one part under heaven shines to the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Amen. Amen. So his return shall be the coming of the Son of Man. As we know, Son of Man refers to God in the flesh not the resurrected spiritual body of the Lord Jesus descending with the clouds to appear before all. Why is that the case? Let's think about it. If the spiritual body of the resurrected Lord Jesus descended, then the world would be shocked. All would drop right to the ground. Yes. None would resist. If so, would the returned Lord Jesus still be rejected by this generation? Of his return, the Lord Jesus said, the coming of the Son of Man and as a thief. In reality, it's referring to God incarnated as the Son of Man arriving in secret. It's true. The Lord Jesus' words are clear. The returned Lord must first endure suffering and be rejected by this generation. Is this not God in the flesh? We've seen such scriptures before. Why haven't we been able to be enlightened? Their communication's been so enlightening. We must listen carefully. Yeah. How is the Son of Man descending in secret related to God openly appearing with the clouds? What is involved? Let's communicate about that. Okay. Thanks be to okay. the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the last days, God is incarnated and descends secretly to speak among men and begin the judgment from the house of God, purifying all who hear his voice and return before his throne and making them into a group of overcomers. Then God goes to Zion and brings the great disaster refining and chastising all those who don't accept God's judgment of the last days. Then God shall descend with the clouds to openly appear to all. The prophecy in Revelation 1-7 would then be fulfilled. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. Everybody asks why. When the Lord descends with the clouds, 
those who pierce the Lord can still see him. Just who are the people who pierced him? <laughs> Do I need to say it? The ones who crucified the Lord Jesus in the first place. Yes. yes. Some would say, it's those who nailed the Lord Jesus to the cross. Is that really the case? Weren't those who crucified the Lord destroyed by God long ago? That's right. Yes, yes that's right. That is, yes, indeed, that is correct. indeed correct. Right. In reality, those who pierced him are those who, when God incarnate descends secretly in the last days, do not seek God's voice and condemn and resist Almighty God. That's right. At that time, they will see Almighty God that they have resisted and condemned is in fact the Savior Jesus they've been waiting for. They shall weep, beat their chest, and gnash their teeth. Their outcome can only be punishment. The book of Revelation does not say whether such people will live or die. So we cannot know. Only God knows. It's true. Up to this point, we all should be clear. Only the wise virgins who hear God's voice can welcome the Lord's return, be brought before God's throne to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb, and be perfected by God into an overcomer. This fulfills the prophecy in Revelation 14.4. These are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits to God and to the Lamb. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Those who cling to the notion that the Lord will descend with the clouds but don't seek God's work in the last days are in fact foolish virgins. Oh, yes. In particular, those who resist and condemn Almighty God are the Pharisees and Antichrists exposed by God's work in the last days. They all have re-crucified God, mm. and they shall endure great disasters and be punished. The mistake. Those who only welcome the Lord that descends with the clouds have made. What type of people they are, and what their outcome will be. I trust we're now clear on. It's clearer now. Praise the Lord. What they have said is right. Key to receiving the Lord's return is listening to God's yeah. voice. That's utterly correct. Yes. We have neglected this point. It's true. We really are foolish. Yes, it's it true. It seems we must look into the work of Almighty God in the last days. Yeah. Once the disasters come, it will be unimaginable. It's true. It's true. No one can know who will live or die. Yeah. I think that communication is quite good. We better hurry and look into it. If we still do not listen to God's voice, then we will fall into disaster. Indeed. We better listen carefully. <clears throat> you say the Lord will return secretly, in the flesh in the last days. Make a group of overcomers, and then descend with the clouds before all. This indeed makes sense. But for 2,000 years, most believers wait for the Lord to descend with the clouds. Yes. Amen. Our pastors and elders often say this. Yes. How could it possibly be wrong to wait in accordance with the Bible? That's right. That's right. How could this be wrong? Our pastors and elders are people who serve the Lord. Yes. yes. They wait for him to return thus. I don't believe the returned Lord would abandon all these pastors and elders. That's, That's impossible. No way. Utterly impossible. How could that be possible? Yes, we must listen to the pastors and elders. Nothing wrong. Amen. They've believed longer and better grasp the Bible. That's, That's right. right. We have to listen to them. Amen. Amen. We should obey what the pastors and elders say as long as it is based on the Bible. That's right. Amen. Obeying them is obeying the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's enough to follow pastors and elders and wait for the Lord to descend with the clouds. The Lord is merciful. He would not abandon us and moreover would not punish us. Amen. He would not abandon us. 
What's your basis for saying something like that? Is what you have said in line with the words of the Lord Jesus? Are they based on God's words? If what you say is based on man's notions and imaginations, it would be resisting the Lord. Think of how the Pharisees waited for the arrival of the Messiah and why it was that they nailed the Lord Jesus to the cross. Initially, the Pharisees were replete with notions when it came to the Messiah. They saw the biblical prophecy. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder. But you, Bethlehem Ephratah, though you be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall he come forth to me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from of old, from everlasting. Amen. Amen. Based on the words of the prophecies in the Bible, and various long-held assumptions concerning the arrival of the Messiah, the Pharisees felt sure the Lord would be called Messiah and be born into wealth. And furthermore, like David, he would become the king of Israel and lead them to break free from the Roman government. Many Israelites probably thought this. Yes. yes. But God did not fulfill these prophecies according to their notions and imaginations. Therefore, the Pharisees made accusations and condemned the Lord Jesus. Although at the time, the Lord Jesus expressed many truths and performed many miracles, fully demonstrating God's authority and power, the Pharisees did not care how profound the Lord Jesus' words were, nor even how great was His authority. As long as it did not conform with their notions, as long as He was not born into a wealthy and noble family, as long as His name was not Messiah, they would condemn and resist. Yeah. yeah. Indeed, that's all true. Due to their truth-hating nature, they ultimately nailed the Lord Jesus who expressed truths and performed redemption work to the cross. That's all true. Brothers and sisters, are the Pharisees detestable? Too detestable. Yes. 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 Should they not be cursed? They should be cursed. Uh, they they should be cursed. The Pharisees' sins in condemning the Lord Jesus thoroughly exposed their truth-loathing, truth-hating satanic nature. Hmm. This clearly shows that their hearts were not genuinely looking forward to the Messiah saving them from sin. So instead looking forward to what? They were looking forward to the King of the Jews helping them break from Roman rule so they'd no longer have to suffer like slaves. They believed in God and awaited the Messiah's arrival to satisfy their own personal desires. Let's think about it. What mistake did the Pharisees make in waiting for the coming of the Messiah? Why is it that they were cursed and punished by God? This is really thought-provoking. Mm -hmm. Yes, we should think about it. Yeah. Why did the Pharisees resist and condemn the Lord Jesus when He appeared to perform His work? What nature of the Pharisees was demonstrated here? These are problems people who long for God's appearance should understand. This is indeed worthy of deep thought. If we can't see through these problems, then as for receiving the returned Lord Jesus, we might be on the same God-resisting path as the Pharisees. Do you not agree with this? Yes. Frightening. We must not walk yeah. the Pharisees' path. He's right. Yeah. How did the Pharisees wait for the Messiah to arrive? Why is it that they crucified the Lord Jesus? Just what is the source of these questions? Let's look at what was said by Almighty God. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. 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 Almighty God says, Do you wish to know the root of why the Pharisees oppose Jesus? Do you wish to know the substance of the Pharisees? They were full of fantasies about the Messiah. What's more, they believed only that the Messiah would come, yet did not seek the truth of life. And so, even today they still await the Messiah. For they have no knowledge of the way of life and do not know what the way of truth is. How say you, could such foolish, stubborn, and ignorant people gain God's blessing? How could they behold the Messiah? They opposed Jesus because they did not know the direction of the Holy Spirit's work, because they did not know the way of truth spoken by Jesus, and furthermore, because they did not understand the Messiah. And since they had never seen the Messiah and had never been in the company of the Messiah, they made the mistake of paying empty tribute to the name of the Messiah while opposing the substance of the Messiah by any means. These Pharisees, in substance, were stubborn, arrogant, and did not obey the truth. The principle of their belief in God is, no matter how profound your preaching, no matter how high your authority, you are not Christ unless you are called the Messiah. Are these views not preposterous and ridiculous? Amen. Amen. Yes. Thank the Lord. Yes. Thank the Lord. Almighty God's words show the essence, source of the Pharisees' resistance of the Lord Jesus in waiting for the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So in regard to receiving the Lord's return, if man relies on their notions, waiting for the Lord to descend with the clouds, rather than listening to God's voice, then won't they be walking the same God-resisting path of the Pharisees? Yeah. Then just what will their outcome be? They'll be cursed and punished, just like the Pharisees. You were right. It seems we're clear on this. What you have said is all true. Those Pharisees relied on their imaginations in longing for the Messiah. They condemned the Lord Jesus, and so they were cursed by God. We're also relying on our imaginations when it comes to receiving the returned Lord, thinking that when He returns in the last days, He'll descend with the clouds and take us to the kingdom of heaven. We even think if the Lord Jesus does not so descend, he must be fake. We blindly follow pastors and elders in condemning the Eastern Lightning. In this way, aren't we like the Pharisees, resisting and even condemning the Lord? That's right. It's terrifying, thinking of it now. Sister Wei, though what they say conforms, with the Bible. I maintain that the Lord will descend with the clouds. Amen. Amen. The Lord will descend with the clouds to take us to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. The Lord said those hmm. who wait for him shall not be ashamed. Yeah. It's true. I agree with Brother Ja. Amen. Brother Ja, we used to think the same. We believed the returned Lord would descend with the clouds to take us to the kingdom of heaven. From the look of things, it now seems we might be wrong. Yeah. yeah. What they've said, based on the Lord's prophecies in the Bible, is clear. The Lord Jesus will return in the last days secretly as the Son of Man. 
perform judgment beginning from the house of God and create a group of overcomers before the disaster. Then he appears publicly descending with the clouds. I think this conforms with the Bible and the words of the Lord. Now the coming of the bridegroom has been testified. Have we looked into it? What is it then that we have been doing? We've been following religious leaders in condemning the Eastern Lightning. Is this right? Is this in line with the Lord's intentions? Even though we cannot be sure if Almighty God is the return of the Lord Jesus, we should at least seek and investigate. Yes, yes. we should must investigate. investigate. Let's listen to Almighty God's Word to see if it is the Lord's voice. Yeah. Otherwise, if we're not perfected into overcomers by the Lord who arrives in secret, we'll fall into the disaster and be punished. Then we would really lose. Oh, oh yes. Yes, yes. Yes. We can't miss the chance. Sister Fu is right. The suffering we've endured for believing in the Lord would be in vain. Yeah. Yes. yes. Then we would be such foolish virgins. Yes. yes. Wouldn't our faith come to nothing? We better ask the preachers from the Church of Almighty God to communicate with us more. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. okay. Uh, brothers, please try to communicate with us some more. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, now, Almighty God's Kingdom Gospel has been spreading through China for more than 20 years. It's spread to many denominations. That's right. During this period, due to the CCP government's furious suppression, coupled with the CCP's propaganda, Almighty God is already a household name everyone knows. That's right. Mm. And now, all truths expressed by Almighty God and the films produced by the Church of Almighty God have been released online, spreading across the world. That's right. Completely beyond my expectations. I trust people in religious circles have all heard about the Church of Almighty God's testimony methods. Yes, we have indeed heard of them. Many people testified God has come fulfilling the Lord Jesus' prophecy. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go you out to meet him. Then why do religious pastors and elders still furiously resist the work of Almighty God in the last days? There are many prophecies of the Lord's return in the Bible. So why are they fixated on the prophecy of the Lord descending with the clouds? Why don't they investigate when they hear testimonies of the Lord's coming? Yeah. Why when they know that Almighty God has expressed many truths and they've seen the reality of God's work, do they stubbornly hold to their notions and resist and condemn the work of God of the last days? These are good questions. Do these people love the truth and look forward in earnest to the Lord's arrival or not? Are they wise virgins? or foolish virgins. If they're wise virgins and earnestly look forward to the Lord's return, then why would they hear God's voice and see how the kingdom gospel flourishes? Do they stubbornly condemn and resist? Could this be their sincerity in longing for and hoping for the Lord to appear? Could this be their true expression in rejoicing the return of the Lord? It could not. Let's be truly honest. Their longing for the return of the Lord Jesus is fake, but their longing for the kingdom of heaven is real. Yes. Yeah. They believe in the Lord not to pursue the truth and gain life, not to gain the truth, and cast off sin. What do they care about the most? It's when the Lord will descend to take them to the kingdom of heaven, and they'll escape suffering of the flesh and enjoy the kingdom of heaven. That's their true purpose of belief in God. Well said. 
tell me, apart from this, what reason do they have to reject Almighty God, who expresses truths to save mankind? Please think about it. If someone loves the truth and truly longs for God to appear, how will they act when they hear that the Lord has come? Would they not listen, look, nor seek? No. no. Would they blindly deny, condemn, and resist? They would no. not. No way. That's right. There's no way. People who long for God's appearance and welcome Him look forward to true light appearing, truth ruling within their heart. They look forward to God coming to help mankind escape sin, become holy, and be gained by God. Amen. Isn't that right, everyone? Yeah. yeah. That's, That's indeed right. That is indeed yes. right. I agree. But those who just wait for the Lord to descend with the clouds, yet deny Almighty God, especially those religious leaders who resist Almighty God to protect their status, these are all people who hate and despise the truth. They are all antichrists, unbelievers exposed by God's work of the last days. After God in the flesh completes his work of salvation, they will fall into the once in a million year disaster, weeping and gnashing teeth. Then the prophecy of the Lord publicly descending with the clouds will be completely fulfilled. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Amen. 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 We would not have known this had we not listened to them today. Their communication is enlightening. Everyone, let's take a look at the words of Almighty God. Okay. okay. Almighty God says, People who do not accept the truth, yet blindly await the arrival of Jesus upon white clouds, will surely blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. And they are the race that shall be destroyed. You merely wish for the grace of Jesus and merely want to enjoy the blissful realm of heaven. Yet you have never obeyed the words spoken by Jesus and have never received the truth expressed by Jesus when he returns to flesh. What will you hold up in exchange for the fact of Jesus' return upon a white cloud? Is it the sincerity in which you repeatedly commit sins and then confess them over and over? What will you offer in sacrifice to Jesus who returns upon a white cloud? Is it the years of work with which you exalt yourselves? What will you hold up to make the returned Jesus trust you? Is it that arrogant nature of yours which does not obey any truth? I tell you, those who believe in God because of the signs are surely the brood that shall suffer destruction. Those who are incapable of accepting the words of Jesus who has returned to flesh are surely the progeny of hell, the descendants of the archangel, the brood that shall be subjected to everlasting destruction. Many people may not care what I say, but I still want to tell every so-called saint who follows Jesus that when you see Jesus descend from the heaven upon a white cloud with your own eyes, 
This will be the public appearance of the Son of Righteousness. Perhaps that will be a time of great excitement for you. Yet you should know that the time when you witness Jesus descend from the heaven is also the time when you go down to hell to be punished. It will herald the end of God's management plan and will be when God rewards the good and punishes the wicked. For the judgment of God will have ended before man sees signs when there is only the expression of truth. Thanks be to the Lord. Those who accept the truth and do not seek signs and thus have been purified shall have returned before the throne of God and entered the Creator's embrace. Only those who persist in the belief that the Jesus who does not ride upon a white cloud is a false Christ shall be subjected to everlasting punishment. For they only believe in the Jesus who exhibits signs, but do not acknowledge the Jesus who proclaims severe judgment and releases the true way of life. And so, it can only be that Jesus deals with them when he openly returns upon a white cloud. They are too stubborn, too confident in themselves, too arrogant. How could such degenerates be rewarded by Jesus? Here, drink some water. What's going on? I was thinking. I've believed in the Lord for years, but the way I've treated his return. I have never actually sought the Lord's intentions. I keep living in my own imaginations, foolishly waiting for the Lord to descend with the clouds and take me into the kingdom of heaven. Though people have shared the testimonies of Almighty God's work for years, I was stubborn and refused to listen to the Lord's voice and denied his return. And now I think, I am far too arrogant. How am I any different from those Pharisees who resisted the Lord Jesus? That is indeed so. People from the Church of Almighty God have for many years now testified the Lord's return. Why didn't we go look into it? Yes. Thinking back, we were extremely arrogant and conceited. Foolish, too. Yes, indeed. 
Finally, I understand. We all want to welcome the Lord's arrival and enter the kingdom of heaven, but few focus on listening for the Lord's voice or seeking out the appearance and work of the Lord. Yes. This is our biggest mistake in belief and our disobedience. I agree. If the preachers from the Church of Almighty God did not communicate earnestly with all, who among us would have been able to recognize God's voice or see God's appearance? Thank the Lord. We must really communicate with them at our meeting today. Okay, let's truly listen. Mm. Brother Lee. Yes. These past days, we've heard Almighty God's words and all gained a lot. We believe the words of Almighty God are truth. Yes. yes. Praise God. Praise God. However, there are still some things we don't understand. Please communicate with us more. Sure. Tell me what they are and we'll start. Great. It's like this. You've testified the incarnate Almighty God has expressed millions of words and performed judgment beginning from the house of God. Correct. But this exceeds what's in the Bible. Yeah. You see, our pastors and leaders would often tell us God's words and work are all in the Bible. There are no words and work of God outside it. Amen. Amen. The Lord Jesus' salvation work is done. In the last days, he'll return to take believers to the kingdom of heaven. Amen. 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 We've always believed belief in the Lord must be based on the Bible. If we stick to the Bible, we'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. But from the look of things, our viewpoint seems to be wrong. How is it wrong? Yeah. Yet we can't see through this. And so please communicate with us more. Ah, okay. Ah, allow me to speak. Brothers and sisters, our viewpoint can't be wrong. That's All right. right. All God's words and work are within the Bible. That's right. Yeah. God would not speak and work outside of the Bible. Amen. Amen. Our belief in the Lord has always been based on the Bible. Amen. Amen. Straying from the Bible is the same as leaving the Lord's way. It's betraying Him. All pastors and elders think this is so. What could be wrong with that? Right. In the Bible, God's salvation is complete. Amen. Amen. That is why we must never stray from it. Brothers and sisters, if we hold to the Bible, when the Lord comes, we'll enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. We must be confident. Yes. That's right. I'd like to hear what else you have to say. All believers think the Bible contains all of God's words and His work. God's salvation is complete, so none of God's words and work are outside of it. Belief in the Lord is holding fast to the Bible. If we don't leave the Bible, the Lord will take us to the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. wow, that makes a lot of sense. Such a viewpoint might conform with man's notions, but is it based on the words of the Lord Jesus? Are you sure it conforms with the truth? The Lord Jesus never said, all God's words and work are within the Bible, nor that none of God's words and His work are outside of it. Yes. Those who understand the Bible know that it was put together by mankind many years after God's work. God's work came first, and then came the Bible. That's right. Yes. That's true. In other words, each time God completed a stage of His work, those who experienced God's work would record God's words and work from that time. And these records were then compiled by people into the Bible. 
Now, think about it. How could work that God has not yet done be compiled into the Bible in advance? God's judgment work of the last days couldn't possibly be recorded in the Bible. Yes. The Bible has existed for nearly 2,000 years. Almighty God just started judgment of the last days. Therefore, the words and work of God in the last days couldn't possibly be recorded in the Bible. Yes. yes. Isn't that a fact? Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. That is so true. In the last days, Almighty God's begun judgment from the house of God, expressing several million words. These words are all truths that purify and save mankind and are the way of eternal life brought by Christ of the last days. Yes. They're in the Bible of the Age of Kingdom. This is the book, The Word Appears in the Flesh. Though the truths Almighty God expressed aren't in the Bible, they fulfilled the Lord Jesus' prophecies. Open, please, to John 16, 12 through 13, and Revelation 2, 17. Who wants to read? Allow me. I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Amen. Amen. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit said to the churches. Amen. The truth expressed by Almighty God shows that Almighty God is the embodiment of the Spirit of truth and that he's the incarnate God. Yes. Almighty God's words are the expression of the Spirit of Truth in the last days, the words from the Holy Spirit to the churches. Amen. Do any dare say these are not God's words? Do any still deny this? If one sees God's words and work in the last days, would they still say, all God's words are within the Bible? There are no words and work of God outside it? No, we can't say that. That's right. People don't know how the Bible was formed. They don't know that it was formed after God completed each stage of His work. And yet they arbitrarily conclude that there are no words and work of God outside the Bible. Aren't these people absurd and arbitrary? Yeah. 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 Yes, the Bible was compiled by man after God had completed his work. How could the work of God in the last days appear in the Bible in advance? Yeah, we've believed for years. How come we couldn't see this? We're really ignorant. Indeed, indeed. Brothers and sisters, if we don't understand how the Bible was formed, it is easy to deviate on the path to believing in God. Yes. During the two stages of God's work in the age of law and the age of grace, all the words expressed by God weren't completely recorded in the Bible. For instance, in the age of law, there were some prophets whose prophecies aren't in the Bible. This is a fact that many brothers and sisters know about. Yes. yes, some prophecies of Ezra weren't recorded in the Bible. In the Age of Grace, there were more words spoken by the Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. But the words recorded in the Bible are limited. The Lord Jesus had preached on earth for three and a half years. How many words would he have spoken during each day? Yeah. There were many sermons and words spoken by the Lord Jesus in those three and a half years. There's no way anyone could calculate it. Yes. Just as John the Apostle said, and there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Amen. Let's look at the four New Testament Gospels. 
the words of the Lord Jesus in these are limited. They are only the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. yeah. If the Lord Jesus had only said what was recorded in these in those years, how would he have been able to conquer the people who followed him then? How could the Lord Jesus' work have shaken up all of Judea? Yes. Yes. Therefore, the words of God recorded in the Bible contain a limited portion. Certainly not all the words God spoke during his work. This is a fact no one is able to deny. Yes. yes. We all know God's, the Lord of creation. Amen. Amen. The source of mankind's life, Amen. the wellspring of living water that never runs Amen. dry. Amen. God's richness is inexhaustible and always there. Amen. Amen. Whereas the Bible is merely a record of the first two stages of God's work, what's recorded of God's words is limited. It is like a mere drop in the sea of God's life. Amen. Amen. How can we limit God's words and work to just the Bible? As if God could just say those limited words in the Bible. Isn't this delimiting, belittling, and blasphemy to God? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Therefore, to delimit all God's words and work to the Bible, and to think there are no words and work of God outside the Bible is a major mistake. Mm, that's right. And now let's read a few passages of Almighty God's words to better see this aspect of the truth. Yes. Okay. okay. Great. Almighty God says, All that is recorded within the Bible is limited and unable to represent all the work of God. The four Gospels have fewer than 100 chapters altogether in which are written a finite number of happenings, such as Jesus cursing the fig tree, Peter's three denials of the Lord, Jesus appearing to the disciples following his crucifixion and resurrection, teaching about fasting, teaching about prayer, teaching about divorce, the birth and genealogy of Jesus, Jesus' appointment of the disciples, and so forth. These are but a few writings, yet man values them as treasures, even verifying the work of today against them. They even believe that Jesus only did so much in the time after his birth. It is as if they believe God can only do this much, that there can be no further work. Is this not ludicrous? After all, which is greater, God or the Bible? Why must God's work be according to the Bible? Could it be that God has no right to exceed the Bible? Can God not depart from the Bible and do other work? Why did Jesus and his disciples not keep the Sabbath? If he were to keep the Sabbath and practice according to the commandments of the Old Testament, why did Jesus not keep the Sabbath after he came, but instead washed feet, covered head, broke bread, and drank wine? Isn't this all absent from the commandments of the Old Testament? If Jesus honored the Old Testament, why did he defy these doctrines? You should know which came first, God or the Bible. Being the Lord of the Sabbath, could he not also be the Lord of the Bible? The fact I am explaining here is this. What God is and has is forever inexhaustible and limitless. God is the source of life and all things. God cannot be fathomed by any created being. Lastly, I must still remind everybody, do not again delimit God in books, words, or his past utterances. 
The only characteristic of God's work is embodied in one word, new. He does not like to take old paths or repeat his work, and moreover does not want to be delimited to a certain scope to be worshipped by people. This is God's disposition. Amen. Amen. Yes. yes. Mm. Almighty God's words are indeed truth. As I listen, I feel enlightened. Yeah, praise the Lord. God is the source of man's life, the ever-flowing wellspring of living water. God's words can't be exhausted. Yeah, it's That's true. Right. true. How could God's words be limited to just those in the Bible? Yeah. We were foolish and blind and didn't know God. We've believed for years, yet don't understand any truth even limiting God's words and work to the Bible. As though what's recorded in the Bible were all of God's word and work. This is indeed belittling and blaspheming God. Yes, that's, true. that's indeed so. If a person is arrogant and does not pursue the truth and lacks fear of God, it's easy for them to resist God. Oh, yes. that's correct. Absolutely, indeed. Brothers and sisters, I don't deny what they said of God's words existing outside the Bible. But we believers know the Bible is given by God's inspiration. Amen. Amen. All words within the Bible are the words of God. Yes. yes. The Bible represents the Lord. Right. That's right. To believe in the Bible is to believe in the Lord. Straying from the Bible means not believing in the Lord. That's yes. right. We just need to hold on to the Bible. Even if we reject God's work in the last days, we will enter the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Our understanding will not be wrong. That's right. Yes. Brother Ja is correct. Paul made it very clear in 2 Timothy. The Bible is inspired by God. This means that every word in it is the word of God. Amen. Amen. And that it represents the Lord. Right. We only need to stick to the Bible. We don't need to accept God's work in the last days. That's right. The coming of the Lord Jesus will take us to his kingdom. The Lord did not say to accept his work in the last days. Amen. Therefore, as long as we stick to the Bible, we will surely be taken into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Do you dare deny this? Brother Jean, Brother Jean, you say that moving away from the Bible means not believing in the Lord. So let me ask, back when the Lord Jesus was preaching, those who followed the Lord Jesus came away from the Bible to accept his work. Were these not believers in the Lord? Yeah, I see. The Pharisees resisted and condemned the Lord Jesus because they clung to the Bible. So they were condemned by the Lord. They were cursed by the Lord. What's the problem? Does holding on to the Bible represent obeying the Lord? Does it mean when you hold on to the Bible that you revere the Lord? Is the Bible greater or the Lord? The Pharisees made it clear to us. Did they believe in the Lord or resist the Lord? Are you going to keep going down the path of the Pharisees and resist the Lord? Don't you know the outcome of this? Is knowing the fate of the Pharisees still not enough to wake us up? He's right. We can't go the same path of the Pharisees. Most of the religious world rely on the words of Paul. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. To think that everything in the Bible is the word of God and that by following it, they'll be led into the kingdom of heaven. In the last days, most believers still believe in this. But does this viewpoint align with truth and fact? Did the Lord Jesus ever say all scripture is given by inspiration of God? Did the Holy Spirit say it? No, no. Right, never. It was Paul who said those things. Many believers use the words of Paul as the basis of their belief that every word in the Bible 
is the word of God. But isn't doing this a big mistake? Yes. Yes, Yes, it is. Some people believe that even words spoken by people are the words of God if they're in the Bible. Isn't this idea fallacious and absurd? Indeed. Yes, absolutely. All believers should be clear. The Bible is a testimony of God and a record of His work. The creation of the Bible was based on God's salvation. Every stage of God's work is filled with the battle between God and the forces of Satan. That's right. Which is why the Bible has not only God's word, but the words of people, and even the words of Satan. That's right. This is just a fact. Hey, he's right. The Bible has the words of the apostles, too. Yeah, not to mention the words of the Pharisees and Satan. That's all completely true. Yeah. Yeah. So then, are we able to say that every word in the Bible is the word of God? No, of course not. Isn't this confusing what is simply black and white? It is. Yes, it yes. is. How can people even think of these erroneous ideas? Why think that when the facts are so clear to us? Anyone who's read the Bible knows there are conversations between God and Moses and between God and Job between God and His chosen people, and between God and Satan. Yeah, it's true. true. If someone's conversing with God, does that mean that they utter the word of God? They definitely don't. No. Not at all. Isn't that idea ridiculous? Yeah. Yes. yes. The saying that all scripture is given by inspiration of God cannot possibly be the truth. Some people insist that Man's word in the Bible is the word of God. This is nowhere near the truth. That notion is seriously offensive to God. It tarnishes and blasphemes God. God's words are God's words. Yes. Man's words are man's words. Satan's words are just Satan's words. That's right. Why would people mix them up? God's words are always the truth. Amen. Amen. Man's words can never be the truth. At most, they can conform to the truth. Amen. Satan's words will always be lies and falsehoods. Even if spoken a thousand times, they will always be lies and falsehoods. Amen. 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 If we were wise, we would know this for sure. Yes. 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 Only fools insist on a false viewpoint. Yes. Yes. We will understand even more after we read the words of Almighty God. Thanks Thanks be to the Lord. Lord. Almighty God says, Today, people believe the Bible is God and that God is the Bible. So too do they believe that all the words of the Bible were the only words God spoke and that they were all said by God. Those who believe in God even think that although all of the 66 books of the Old and New Testament were written by people, they were all given by inspiration of God and a record of the utterances of the Holy Spirit. This is the erroneous interpretation of people and it does not completely accord with the facts. In fact, Apart from the books of prophecy, most of the Old Testament is historical record. Some of the epistles of the New Testament come from people's experiences, and some come from the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit. The Pauline epistles, for example, arose from the work of a man. They were all the result of the Holy Spirit's enlightenment, and they were written for the churches, were words of exhortation and encouragement for the brothers and sisters of the churches. They were not words spoken by the Holy Spirit. Paul could not speak on behalf of the Holy Spirit. And neither was he a prophet, much less did he see visions. His epistles were written for the churches of Ephesus, Philadelphia, Galatia, and other churches. 
And thus, the Pauline epistles of the New Testament are epistles that Paul wrote for the churches, and not inspirations from the Holy Spirit, nor are they the direct utterances of the Holy Spirit. If people see the epistles or words like Paul's as the utterances of the Holy Spirit and worship them as God, then it can only be said that they are too indiscriminating. To speak more harshly, isn't this nothing but blasphemy? How could a man talk on behalf of God? And how could people bow down before the records of his epistles and of the words he spoke, as if they were a holy book or a heavenly book? Could the words of God be casually uttered by a man? How could a man talk on behalf of God? Oh, wow. That's a great, great point. point. Thanks be to God. So not all the Bible is inspired by God. Yes. The Bible has the words of men and of God. If we want to find which words in the Bible were from God and which were from man, we simply need to read who said them. Yeah, right. right. If it's said by God, it's God's words. If it's said by man, then it's man's words, excluding the words spoken by God through the prophets. If it's Satan's words, then we know that it's false. Yes, mm, that's right. Yes. This is such a practical way to distinguish them. It's great. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Now, when I think back, which words in the Bible were spoken by God, which words were spoken by man, and who the authors of the epistles were? It's all so clearly stated in the Bible. Yes, yeah. yes, it is. It's very clear. Yeah. Then why are we going against facts and treating all words in the Bible as God's? I think Paul's words misled us that all scripture is given by inspiration of God. Indeed. Oh, yes. Of course. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. It seems those who don't understand the truth are easily deceived. Yes. yes. That's right. Worshiping man makes it easy to stray from the true way. Yes. From here on out, we mustn't blindly trust the words of Paul. We have to differentiate them. Amen. Yes. Yes. She's Amen. absolutely right. Hey, aren't we putting too much distinction between the words of God and man here? Is it necessary? Believing in the Lord is believing in the Bible. Right. That's what the pastors say. Indeed. How can that be wrong? Your belief is confused. We should be clear about our belief. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's clearer now. Many believers think that the Bible represents the Lord, represents God. They say that belief in the Lord is belief in the Bible. This viewpoint may not seem very wrong. However, for those who have experience, this view really is. It shows men believe in God but don't know Him and they're unclear on the relationship between the Bible and God. If anyone still insists that the Bible represents God and that belief in the Bible is belief in God, I ask you, does the Bible save people or does God save people? It's God, God saves people. God saves. Hmm. Can the Bible replace God's work? It can't. Can it replace the work of the Holy Spirit? No. no. Definitely of not. Of course not. God made the heavens and the earth. Could the Bible do such a thing? No. Is God greater or the Bible? Did God come first or did the Bible? Have you ever considered these things? No. No, I hadn't. I we have not really thought about it before. If believers can't understand these essential truths that are little more than common sense, then how can they ever hope to experience God's work? Don't they know anything about the work of the Holy Spirit? Do they have any knowledge of God's almightiness and wisdom? We all know God. 
is the one true God, the Lord of creation. Amen. Amen. God speaks words, created the heavens and the earth, and rules all things. Amen. Amen. God is a spirit, but can become flesh to speak and work among man, to redeem and save us. Amen. God is real and alive. Amen. The Almighty, who is and was and is to come. Amen. Amen. The Bible is merely a record of God's work in the age of law and the age of grace. It's just a history book. How can it possibly compare to God? Right. That's why, no matter how you look at it, the Bible can't represent God. Belief in the Bible isn't belief in God, and clinging to the Bible isn't following God. The Bible is the Bible. God is God. Amen. The Bible and God are completely separate things. That's a fact nobody can deny. Hmm. Today has finally made me understand. The Bible is the Bible, and God is God. They're separate things. After hearing everything today, I understand the Bible can't represent God at all. That's right. But then what is the relationship between God and the Bible? I think we'd all like to know some more. Yes, yes, yes please, please tell do us tell now. us. Thanks be to God. The Lord Jesus has given us a clear answer. Please open up to John 5:39 to 40. Sister, will you read it for us? Sure. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. Amen. 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 The Lord Jesus explained the relationship between them. Yeah. The Bible is a testimony. It doesn't have eternal life and can't bestow life. Christ alone is the truth, the way, and the life. Amen. So then, only by accepting and following Christ and obeying God's end-time word and work can we gain the truth and eternal life. Yes. yes. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Amen. But right now, I think we should look at how so many people in religious circles still think that to depart from the Bible is to depart from the Lord. They even think that if they stick to the Bible, they'll get into the kingdom of heaven. But isn't this viewpoint just ridiculous? Oh, yes. yes. It really is. Actually, the Bible is just a history book, a record of God's work. If people ignore this fact and hold on to the Bible, then I ask you all today, can the Bible replace God's work in the last days? No, no. it can't. Can the Bible replace Christ in expressing the truth? No. 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 Can one really gain the truth in life by only sticking to the Bible? No, not a chance. When people hold on to the Bible like the Pharisees, does this prove that they follow and obey God? If people only hold on to the Bible, but they don't accept the work of Christ in the last days, then how can they gain the truth and achieve salvation and enter God's kingdom? Yes. Everyone, let's read more words of Almighty God so we understand this more clearly. All right. All right. Yes. Perfect. Let's do that. Yes. Almighty God says, From the time when there was the Bible, people's belief in the Lord has been the belief in the Bible. Instead of saying people believe in the Lord, it is better to say they believe in the Bible. Rather than saying they have begun reading the Bible, it is better to say they have begun believing in the Bible. And rather than saying they have returned before the Lord, it would be better to say they have returned before the Bible. In this way, people worship the Bible as if it were God, as if it were their lifeblood,
and losing it would be the same as losing their life. People see the Bible as being as high as God. And there are even those who see it as higher than God. If people are without the work of the Holy Spirit, if they cannot feel God, they can carry on living. But as soon as they lose the Bible, or lose the famous chapters and sayings from the Bible, then it is as if they have lost their life. They believe in my existence only within the scope of the Bible. For them, I am the same as the Bible. Without the Bible, there is no me, and without me, there is no Bible. They pay no heed to my existence or actions, but instead devote extreme and special attention to each and every word of Scripture. And many of them even believe that I should not do anything I wish to do unless it is foretold by Scripture. They attach too much importance to Scripture. It can be said that they see words and expressions as too important to the extent that they use verses from the Bible to measure every word I say and to condemn me. What they seek is not the way of compatibility with me or the way of compatibility with the truth, but the way of compatibility with the words of the Bible. And they believe that anything that does not conform to the Bible is without exception not my work. Are such people not the dutiful descendants of the Pharisees? The Jewish Pharisees used the law of Moses to condemn Jesus. They did not seek compatibility with the Jesus of that time, but diligently followed the law to the letter to the extent that they ultimately nailed the innocent Jesus to the cross, having charged him with not following the law of the Old Testament and not being the Messiah. Indeed. What was their essence? Was it not that they didn't seek the way of compatibility with the truth? They obsessed over each and every word of the scripture while paying no heed to my will and the steps and methods of my work. They were not people who sought the truth, but people who rigidly followed the words of scripture. They were not people who believed in God, but people who believed in the Bible. Essentially, they were watchdogs of the Bible. In order to safeguard the interests of the Bible and uphold the dignity of the Bible and protect the reputation of the Bible, they went so far as to nail the merciful Jesus onto the cross. This they did merely for the sake of defending the Bible and for the sake of maintaining the status of each and every word of the Bible in people's hearts. So they preferred to forsake their future and the sin offering to condemn Jesus, who did not conform to the doctrine of Scripture to death. Were they not lackeys to each and every word of Scripture? And what of people today? Christ has come to release the truth, yet they would rather expel him from among man in order to gain entry into heaven and receive grace. They would rather completely deny 
the coming of the truth in order to safeguard the interests of the Bible and would rather nail the Christ returning to flesh to the cross again in order to ensure the everlasting existence of the Bible. How can man receive my salvation when his heart is so malicious and his nature so antagonistic toward me? Amen. Almighty God, has exposed religious leaders who exalt the Bible above all else, but never exalt or bear witness to God. They use the Bible to replace and impersonate God, and use the words of the Bible to resist and condemn God's work. That's yes. right. That's right. They have been exposed as truth-hating and God-opposing as well. Think back to the time when Pharisees held on to the scriptures, limited God to the scriptures. They never sought the truth or God's footsteps. Even though the Lord Jesus, when preaching and doing his work, expressed many truths and performed signs and wonders and demonstrated God's authority and power, what did the Pharisees do? They didn't care about the Lord Jesus' profound preaching or great authority. If it did not conform with the scriptures, they would condemn and resist the Lord Jesus. And because the Lord Jesus expressed the word of God, they condemned the words of the Lord Jesus as blasphemy. Yes. And then, in the end, they nailed the Lord Jesus to the cross alive. It's, it's true. true. Yeah. It is. It completely exposed their truth-hating, God-opposing, satanic nature. Yeah. Today, religious leaders are just like the Pharisees of old. They do all they can to exalt the Bible, but never exalt or bear witness to the Lord. They don't proclaim and testify to the words the truth expressed by the Lord. They just talk about Bible knowledge and theology. They spread empty theories to deceive, control, and bind people. They say that all God's words are in the Bible, and that there are no words of God outside the Bible. They say to depart from the Bible means not believing in God. And if you hold firm to it, you'll be taken to God's kingdom. So people mistakenly believe the eternal life is in the Bible and that they only need the Bible to enter the kingdom of heaven. Before they knew it, the Bible had replaced God's position in their hearts. Everyone blindly believes in and worships the Bible as if it were God. The Bible has become like a binding spell for believers. And the Lord's position in people's hearts has gone. It's true. Yes, yes that's it's right. True. It's so true. Yes. What is the consequence of this? People's faith and knowledge of the Lord are reduced to nothing. That's the consequence of pastors and elders explaining the Bible is this not true? Yeah, yes. it is. What you've said is illuminating. I never thought that the Bible could become a spell that could bind us. Yeah. It seems it's better to not have blind faith in the Bible. That's right. It could be dangerous. I'm glad we know this now. I feel so ashamed and embarrassed after listening to this. For so many years, I believed in the Lord but didn't practice His words. And I did not search for the Lord's will and truth in His words. Yes. All I did 
was equip myself with biblical doctrine. Thinking that, the more Bible knowledge I had, the more I was after the Lord's heart, and that understanding a lot of Bible knowledge was the same as knowing the Lord. But after all that, I don't have any understanding of truth at all. And I don't have knowledge of the Lord. The Lord has no place in my heart whatsoever. Indeed. That's right. I can't believe I saw the Bible as higher than the Lord. Wrongly, I thought that belief in the Lord is belief in the Bible and that exalting the Bible is exalting the Lord. I deviated from the way of the Lord without knowing. My belief had become confused and lost. I think we're all like that. Mm -hmm. The words of Almighty God corrected my biggest mistake of belief in the Lord. Yes. And saved me from going down the wrong path. Thanks, Amen. Be, to Thanks be to the Lord. From now on, I won't be controlled and bound by the Bible. Yes. Yes. I must read the words of Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to Almighty God. God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Yes. We should all read more words of Almighty God. We will. We'll read it properly. After these last two meetings, I never realized their preachings would make so much sense and be all based on the Bible. It's enough to convince anyone. I really can't find a flaw in it. I really can't. I agree. But if our whole congregation believes in Almighty God, wouldn't that be bad for our church? Yeah. Brother Ja, we need to find a way to keep them back with us. I don't want to lose our church, but what can we do? They found the words of Almighty God to be truth, and they must accept it. How can I stop them? After all, none of the lies from the CCP have stopped them. It's true. Yeah. There is something. Sister Fu is going to another meeting tomorrow. Come in. <sighs> Jia Hongwei has started to gather brothers and sisters, along with some co-workers, and is threatening them into not accepting the Eastern Lightning. Listen, we need to check it out. Quick, call Brother Lee and the others now. Hurry. Okay, let's go. Hurry. So we must stick to the Bible and cease all contact with the Eastern Lightning. Right. 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 Stop. We'll stop from now. Now. Brother Do, Brother Zhu, only after reading Almighty God's words and understanding many of the truths have I realized what it really means to believe Amen. in God. It strengthened our belief. Our initial faith and love have all come back. Yes. yes. Yeah. So in my heart, I feel the word of Almighty God must be the truth. Amen. It supplies us and resolves our problems of belief. Yes. yes. Yeah. Isn't that what the Holy Spirit said to the churches? Amen. Amen. Why won't you let us accept it? Yes. Yes. Why? Let us accept. Why won't they let us? Yeah. We all used to listen as elders analyzed the Bible. But we didn't enjoy the Holy Spirit's work or receive any life supply. That's right. Our spirits have been dark and withered because of this. Uh, yes, right. that's yes, right. 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 Thanks be to Complete. the Lord. Since receiving the watering of the words of Almighty God, we have found faith and love. Yeah. I regret not reading the words sooner. Yeah. Yes. We already worry that we're too late. So why hold us back from reading Almighty God's words? Yes. Sister, hey, why try I must. Deny us. Sister, Sister Fu. Fu. She's arrived. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. What's she doing here? I have no idea. 
They're all I'm so glad she came. Ah, Sister Zhang. Oh, she came too. Brother Li, Brother Chen, please have Wait. a seat. Take a seat. Thanks. Please, sit. Brothers and sisters, take a seat. Brothers and sisters, you just said that pastors and elders preach Bible knowledge and doctrines, which doesn't help. But isn't that how pastors have done it all over the religious world? That's, That's right. right. Pastors and elders have interpreted the Bible for us for years. And even if you disagree, they worked hard. They have. How can you say that? We ought to suffer for the Lord. Why talk about hard work in marriage? Pastors and elders are appointed by the Lord. Amen. Amen. If we obey them, we obey the Lord. Amen. Amen. If we resist them, then we resist the Lord. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. right. Everyone, if the pastors and elders don't want us to hear the Eastern Lightning, then we must obey them. Yeah, yes. we won't hear that. Yes, we've heard we can't listen to the Eastern we Lightning We have to anymore. obey what the pastors say. We can't accept anything that's not in the Bible. Absolutely, Absolutely. right. We can't go wrong if we stick to the Bible. Agree. Right. Brothers Absolutely. and sisters, it's wrong for us to say that. What? How is it wrong? It does not conform with the Bible. What did Peter say? We ought to obey God rather than men. Amen. Amen. Pastors and elders are just men. Why should believers listen to men and not the Lord? That's right. right. Yes. Can the words of pastors and elders represent the words of the Lord no. Jesus? They no, absolutely they not. They cannot. Right. Almighty God is the second coming of Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Almighty God's words are the truth and can supply us. Amen. Amen. Why won't you let us hear it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to be like the Pharisees? That's right. She's right. What have we gained from listening to pastors? All these years. It's not easy to hear God's voice today. So why won't you let us accept it? Yeah. Why? Only those Pharisees and Antichrists would stop people wanting to seek the true way. Precisely. Precisely. Sister Zhang is right. Sister Zhang, hey, you look, can't... They've started to understand the truth. Yet you refuse and try to stop people from accepting the true way. Yeah. That's right. Isn't this just like in the Bible? But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! Amen. Amen. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. Amen. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer you them that are entering to go yes. in. Brothers and sisters, we must all believe, right? Pastors and elders are ordained by the Lord. That's true. Amen. Amen. They are people who serve the Lord. Obeying pastors and elders is obeying the Lord. Amen. Amen. If we resist our pastors and elders, we are resisting the Lord. That's Amen. 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 How is this resisting the Lord? Can pastors and elders represent the Lord? Pastors and elders cannot be compared to the Lord. Right. Okay. Let's think about this logically, right? Who preaches? when you're sitting in church. The pastors, pastors and, and elders. elders. Right. Pastors and elders. That's right. Only pastors and elders can understand and interpret the Bible. They alone can shepherd us all. Amen. Amen. Yes. Therefore, if what the pastors and elders tell us conforms to the Bible and has basis in it, we should comply and obey. Amen. Amen. As long as pastors and elders' actions conform with the Bible, we should accept it and follow them. Amen. Amen. Tell me this, obeying and listening to pastors and elders, where could we go wrong? Exactly. That's absolutely right. right. I agree. How could they say what I doing? think we should listen to God instead of people. Wait a second. I mean, the pastors and elders have been leading us for years. Everyone calm down. One moment. Everyone. Regarding whether pastors and elders were chosen and appointed by the Lord, we can find out. Let's listen to the fellowship from the Church of Almighty God. 
Let's hear from the Church of Almighty God. Yes. What they preach is profound. We cannot listen. Let's hear what they come up with. Brother Lee, communicate with us. Yes, do it. Tell us. Please. Thanks be to God. Everyone, please allow me to share my knowledge on this. Sure. sure. In religion, many believe religious pastors and elders are chosen, appointed by the Lord, and therefore people should obey them. Is such a view founded in the Bible? Is it proven by the Lord's Word? No. Does it have testimony of the Holy Spirit and confirmation of His work? No, it doesn't. If all the answers are no, then doesn't that mean this belief, that the pastors and elders are appointed by the Lord, is just a figment of people's own imaginations? Yeah. 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 Think about it. In the age of law, Moses was set up by God. However, does that mean all Jewish leaders in the age of law were set up by God? No. In the age of grace, the twelve apostles were appointed by the Lord Jesus himself. Does this mean that all of the pastors and elders in the age of grace were appointed by the Lord? No. 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 Well, well, of course definitely they were. Not. A lot of people like to follow rules, but don't approach things according to facts. That's why they worship people instead. You see the problem? Why can't people make the distinction? Why can't they seek the truth on these things? Yeah. We've never thought of it that way before. It seems the truth is there to find. Right. Brother Lee, fellowship with us, please. Yes, please communicate more. We can see from what's recorded in the Bible. In every age of His work, God chooses some people to cooperate with His work. And those personally appointed and used by God have confirmation of His word. Like in the age of law, God appointed Moses to lead the Israelites. It's proven by God's words. Yes. Let's look at Exodus 3, 9 through 10. Who would like to read? Here, let me. Jehovah God said, Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Amen. Amen. It's proven by God's yes, word. Yes, that's God's nice. word. Yes. I like that In the age of grace, the Lord Jesus appointed 12 apostles to shepherd the church. As the Lord Jesus said when he appointed Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, love you me? Feed my sheep, and I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. Amen. Yes, indeed. From this we can see anyone appointed and used by God is personally witnessed by God. And God's word is proof. It's confirmed by the Holy Spirit's work. That's yes. right. That's right. All their work is upheld by God. Obeying their work and leadership is obeying God. Anyone resisting these people is to resist God. He will be cursed and punished by God. Yes. Just like in the age of law. What happened when Korah, Dathan, and their people resisted Moses? They were directly punished by God. God caused the earth to swallow them all. Yes. 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 Right. Everyone knows that's a fact. Yes. That's true. In the age of grace, the apostles appointed by the Lord have confirmation of His word. But are today's pastors appointed by the Lord? Is it evidenced by the word of the Lord? No. Most of them have certificates in theology or attended theological school. They did this to become pastors, not because the Holy Spirit personally used them. Is this not a fact? Yes, it is. Yes, that is true. 
Has anyone seen or heard the Holy Spirit personally appoint a pastor? No, well, I haven't. No. This simply doesn't happen. That's true. There would be testimony of the Holy Spirit if they were, and believers to witness. So we know pastors and elders are not appointed by the Lord. This is certain. Thank the Lord. That's true. I've even heard some of them don't think the Lord Jesus came from conception by the Holy Spirit. They don't think conception by the Holy Spirit is scientific. They might not even admit that Christ is the appearance of God. Indeed, right. yes. Mm. Yeah. If such pastors existed back in the time when the Lord Jesus worked, they would not have accepted the Lord Jesus. Then how would they treat the appearance and work of God incarnate in the last days? They would all be like the Pharisees, scribes, and chief priests, condemning the Lord Jesus and opposing Him. That would be the case. That's right. Yes. Are such pastors and elders people who genuinely obey God? No, they resist God. They don't even believe in God incarnate and don't acknowledge truth expressed by God incarnate. Isn't Antichrist an accurate thing to call them? Yes, Antichrists. So the idea that pastors and elders are all appointed by the Lord, does this still make sense? It does no, not. No, it no way. Not. There's no question about if that. If one insists these pastors and elders are appointed and used by the Lord, isn't this slander and blasphemy against God? Indeed. Yes. yes. It is. Would God ever use unbelievers and antichrists to lead God's chosen people? No, 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 no that's no. Of course no. not. Isn't this idea completely absurd and wrong, fallacious? Yes, yes. It's it's absolutely absolutely ridiculous. ridiculous. Isn't this just confusing facts, black and white? Yes. 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 So true. It's so true. There's no way we can see through anything without knowing the truth. Everyone, I hope now we've cleared things up. Those appointed and used by God are personally testified by God and have the confirmation and effects of the Holy Spirit's work and can help God's chosen people attain life supply and true shepherding. Yeah. He's absolutely right. God is righteous, holy. Amen. Amen. So all those appointed by God are in line with God's will. Hmm. They won't be like the hypocritical Pharisees. And they won't be like truth-hating, God-opposing antichrists. Yes. 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 That's right. God won't use antichrists. That's right. Definitely. Amen. Let's look at today's religious pastors and leaders. Most of them come from theological schools. But they're not personally appointed by God. They merely study theology and the Bible. Their work and preaching focuses only on Bible knowledge and theology and its characters, stories, and history. Biblical trivia. Yeah, that's yeah, true, that's indeed. indeed. That's true. The other thing they teach is how to follow religious rituals and rules. They don't try to communicate the truth of God's words, nor do they lead people to experience His words or observe God's commandments. They never talk about knowing themselves and real-life experiences. Mm, yeah or discuss true knowledge of God. Can such work and preaching attain the work of the Holy Spirit? No. 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 Can such service satisfy God's intentions? Well, surely no. not. No. no. Can it lead people to practice the truth and enter the right track of faith in God? No. 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 That's, no. That's not possible. Explaining the Bible this way, aren't they following their own path, resisting God? They surely yes, are. Yes, it's definitely yes, indeed, resisting God. Are. And when Almighty God expresses truths and performs His judgment work, these religious leaders know that Almighty God's words are the truth and can purify and save people. Yet they do not accept it. Even worse, 
They don't allow believers to read Almighty God's words. Mm. Yes, right? Just to protect their position, they furiously condemn Almighty God. They even work with the CCP to arrest and persecute of evangelists. It's completely evil. How could believers How could in God they do such a thing? How are these pastors any different from the Pharisees who resisted the Lord Jesus back in the day? They are the modern Pharisees. Yeah. Are they not preventing people from accepting the true way? Yeah. 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 How could these truth-hating, God-opposing people possibly be appointed and used by God? He's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Would God choose these people who hate the truth and get in the way of His will to lead His chosen people? No, not a chance. No, 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 no he wouldn't. That's right. He never would. That's just the Amen. truth. Praise God. The more I listen to you, the more enlightened I feel. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. So all people appointed and used by God are personally witnessed and confirmed by God's word. In the very least, there should be confirmation of the Holy Spirit's yes. word. Yes. It's so Amen. obvious. Pastors and elders aren't confirmed by God's word or by the work of the Holy Spirit. How could they be appointed or used by God? Yes. That's right. That's right. That's right. We believed in the Lord for so long, yet we couldn't even see this. We've really been ignorant and blind. Without such yes. fellowship, I would never have understood. Thanks be to the Lord. Today has been enlightening. Amen. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Wait a minute. You're wrong. In the Bible, Paul clearly said, Take heed therefore to yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers Amen. to feed the church of God. Amen. 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 That proves that pastors and elders are appointed by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Mm. Yeah. And doesn't that represent being appointed by God? Yes. yes. God appointed them as overseers to the flock. There's no way that's wrong. Yes. Isn't that right? That's how it is. Yes, yes indeed. indeed. Yes, that's right. That's, right. Well, that's exactly right. Right. Brother Dole, I've been thinking these past few days, while we've talked about this, on how we used to blindly interpret the Bible, misuse verses, and twist its words. That's yes. right. Yes. Most of what we say is based on our own notions and imaginations, our own absurd ideas. This violates the Lord's words. We don't understand the truth. We have been foolish. Yes, yes. we have yeah. completely. Mm -hmm. I think we should treat each word of the Bible correctly from now on. The words of the Bible are against certain backgrounds. Right. right. We can't just take any verse and use it, applying it however we see fit. That's mm -hmm. right. right. That's right. If we use the verse, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers, to refer to all pastors and elders, isn't that ridiculous? Yes, it is. It is. Yes, it is. Sure. Yeah. We must understand. Who said, and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers? Just who were these words talking about? If you can't answer that, and just apply it however you want, Aren't you removing the context? Yeah. Isn't it distorting the Bible? Yeah, they are distorting it. Oh, yes. yes. That's yes. what they're doing. Can Paul's words show what the Lord Jesus intended? No. 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 Can Paul represent the Lord Jesus? No, he no. can't. He can't. He Only God's words are the truth. Only God's words can be used as proof. Amen. Amen. As for Paul, he is not Christ. He's just a person. Amen. Amen. His words are not truth. Even if he was enlightened by the Holy Spirit, we can only say his words conform with truth. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. We cannot treat the words of Paul as the truth and use them as proof. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Amen. She's right. Sister Fu is right. Paul's words do not represent the Lord's will. Yeah. yeah. Brother Doe, how can you use Paul's words as proof that all pastors and elders are appointed by the Holy Spirit? You say that they are appointed by the Holy Spirit, 
but do they have confirmation of the Holy Spirit's work? Can they give testimony to experiencing the Lord's words? They cannot. Can they show us the path of entering into God's words? He's right. There's no path. And can they bring true supply into our lives? They can't. What have we gained from listening to pastors and elders after all of these years? Can't you see the truth? These preachers from the Church of Almighty God have enlightened us today. How can you still use Paul's words to say pastors and elders are appointed by God? That's right. Don't you understand, or is this false confusion? They're just right. pretending to be confused. Yeah, I agree. I really don't understand. Yeah, it's so obvious. Don't they understand? They use these methods to deceive us. Yeah, we can't listen to them anymore. Yes. Brothers and sisters, let's communicate more on this issue, please. All right. Oh, yes, I, yes. I agree. Some people in religious circles often misuse the Bible to make up rules. They claim the hypocritical Pharisees and pastors are all appointed and used by the Lord. Isn't this severely resisting and blasphemy to God? She's right. Yes. yes. Doing that is so wrong. Many people don't know how to distinguish. They believe but don't magnify God and advocate gifts and status and power, blindly believing in the pastors and elders. Yes. They can't tell whether one has the reality of the truth and the work of the Holy Spirit. They just think, if one is certified as a pastor and can explain the Bible, that they are appointed by God and that we have to obey them. That's how we've been. Some people, even more absurdly, think that obeying pastors and elders is obeying God and resisting pastors and elders is resisting God. If we go according to such ideas, well then, remember the chief priests, scribes, and Pharisees who knew the Bible well and often taught it to others. Yes. Yeah. But resisted the Lord Jesus when he appeared to work back in the day and even eventually had him crucified. Yeah. yeah. I ask, were these people appointed and used by God? No, definitely no, not. No, definitely not. No, no, no way. Not. If one followed the Jewish leaders and condemned the Lord Jesus, then does that mean they were obeying God? No. It doesn't mean no, that. No way. Mm, of course. It does not mean no. that. Would you say that those who rejected Jewish leaders and followed the Lord Jesus they were resisting and disobeying God? They Certainly were. not. No. Certainly not. The view that obeying pastors and elders is obeying God and resisting pastors and elders is resisting God, it really is a ridiculous and harmful yes. one. Yes. That's true. It is absurd. Yes. As believers of God, we should know, if religious pastors and elders resist God and if their path opposes God, and betrays the truth, then we should stand on the side of God and expose them, reject them. Amen. That is true obedience of God. Amen. Amen. That is what it means to satisfy God's intentions. Amen. 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 Yes. You won't listen to them anymore. Right. right. Well then, now when it comes to pastors and elders, we should all understand the truth and God's intentions. If pastors and elders really pursue the truth, then they will surely have the work of the Holy Spirit yes. yeah. and lead us to practice God's words, to fear God, shun evil. Amen. 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 Following and respecting people like that is certainly in line with God's intentions. Praise, Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Thanks, yeah, thanks be to the Lord. But if they don't love the truth, if they only care about theology, or Bible knowledge only to show off, to have people obey them. If they don't bear witness to God, if they don't lead people to experience God's words, then they are people who are condemned and cursed by God. And it would be opposing God if we were to worship them, 
to follow and obey them. That's right. right. That would be against God's intentions. Yes. 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 Everyone, isn't that right? Yes. yes. We should reject those who resist God. We mustn't follow their evil ways. Mm -hmm. Pastors and elders are all like that. They hate the truth and resist God like the Pharisees. Yeah, yeah that's, that's right. That's right. We should despise them and abandon them. Indeed. If we continue to obey them, will be on the side of Satan, opposing God. Amen. Amen. We must see through these things. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. We can't listen to them anymore. Right. Everyone, most people in religious circles are unable to see the pastors and elders' essence of resisting God. Yes. They believe that as long as pastors and elders explain the Bible, and as long as everything they say conforms with the Bible, then they should follow and obey. That may sound reasonable, but think about it. Do pastors and elders really know the Bible? Do they really know God's work? Does having biblical knowledge mean they understand God? Hmm, no. Can listening to them explain the Bible really guide people to know and obey God? I don't think anyone in religious circles are able to answer this. Yeah. yeah. Let's think about this. Back when the Pharisees appeared to others as if they understood the Bible, well, they did not recognize the Lord Jesus when He appeared. Instead, they relied on rules in the Bible to try and trap the Lord Jesus. They resisted and condemned Him. Right. 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 Because the Lord Jesus expressed God's words, they condemned the Lord Jesus, said He was blasphemous. In the end, they even nailed the Lord Jesus to the cross. What was the problem? Were they not arrogant and unknowing of God? Yes. yes. This story proves to us that knowing the Bible and explaining the Bible does not mean one understands the truth and does not mean he knows God and his work. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. exactly. Yes. Those who truly experience God's work pay attention to practicing God's words. In God's words they see all God's wondrous deeds understand the care and thought God has for mankind. They see all the words expressed by God in His work are really the truth that people should enter. Yes. Yeah. They also understand why God expresses these truths, what His intentions are, and what He seeks to achieve through His work on people, those they truly understand. Yes. 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 Yeah. Such people truly understand God's work. Only such people truly understand the Bible. Amen. 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 Only after today so do I really understand. Yes. People who truly understand the Bible focus on communicating God's words, God's own intentions, His requirements, His work, and His disposition. Yes. yes. And can lead people into the truth and can make them fear God and obey Him. Amen. Amen. What do pastors and elders preach instead? Answer that. Bible, facts, and theology. What is the consequence of teaching such things? Consequence? It only serves to make people more arrogant. They feel superior with their biblical knowledge. As a result, when God becomes flesh to express the truth, they deny God, resist God, and oppose God. Absolutely right. It seems that pastors and elders explaining Bible knowledge is really resisting God. Yeah. yeah. They're just like the Pharisees from way back when. Yeah, I agree. Why aren't these pastors and elders able to communicate their knowledge of practicing God's words? Why can't they communicate their understanding of God's work and disposition? It's because they don't have genuine experience of God's words and the truth. They only focus on studying the Bible to attain biblical knowledge. 
Which is why they cannot receive the work of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's right. right. So how could their service possibly receive God's approval? He's right. No, God would not no, approve, of course. God has become flesh as the Son of Man to express the truth and do the judgment work, revealing each person. Those who love the truth, hate the truth, good servants, evil servants, those who serve God or serve mammon will all be revealed. Yes. yes. As for those pastors and elders, they continue to take verses out of context and misconstrue the Bible, even believing there is no utterance and work of God outside the Bible, spreading lies and fallacies to resist God's work in the last days. Yes, mm -hmm. he's absolutely right. True. Tell me, is this not deceiving people and misleading them? Mm -hmm. Yes, that is yes. right. Absolutely. That Pastors and elders deceive us. Who knows how many believers have been led astray, harmed and ruined by these lies? Yeah. How many people have lost the chance to come before God's throne, to attend God's banquet, and lost the chance to be made into an overcomer? So harmful. How can they do such a thing? Everyone. Aren't these pastors obstacles for us trying to accept and find the true way. Amen. I that is true. Of course. We, we, won't we, we won't be deceived again. We weren't able to see it for so long. That's true. No, I agree. I agree. Yeah? Mm. It is true. Well, Let's read the words of Almighty God to discern the pastors and elders even better. All right. All right. Yes. Yes. All right. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Yes. Thanks be to the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Almighty God says, Look at the leaders of every denomination and sect. They are all arrogant and self-right. And they interpret the Bible out of context and according to their own imagination. They all rely on gifts and erudition to do their work. If they were incapable of preaching anything, would those people follow them? They do, after all, possess some learning and can speak a little of doctrine, or know how to win over others and how to use some artifices through which they have brought people before themselves and have deceived them. Nominally, those people believe in God, but in reality they follow their leaders. If they encounter those who preach the true way, some of them would say, we have to consult him about our belief in God. See how they require someone's consent to believe in God? Is that not a problem? What have those leaders become then? Have they not become Pharisees? False shepherds? Antichrists? And stumbling blocks to people's acceptance of the true way? Yes. Oh, wow. yes. It's true. Yes. yes. Those who read the Bible in grand churches recite the Bible every day, yet not one understands the purpose of God's work. Not one is able to know God. Moreover, not one is in accord with the heart of God. They are all worthless, vile men, each standing on high to teach God Though they brandish the name of God, they willfully oppose Him. Though they label themselves believers of God, they are ones who eat the flesh and drink the blood of man. All such men are devils who devour the soul of man, demons who purposefully disturb those who try to step onto the right path and stumbling blocks that impede the path of those who seek God. Though they are of robust flesh, how are their followers to know that they are antichrists who lead man in opposition to God? Amen. How are they to know that they are living devils who specially seek souls to devour? Amen. Amen. Agreed. How did we not know before? Brothers and sisters, 
Before when pastors explained Bible knowledge and theological theory, we blindly worshipped and followed them. Now I know we were so foolish with no ability to distinguish. Yes, yeah, I agree. agree. Yeah, so ignorant. biblical knowledge and theology are too harmful. Amen. Amen. If not for the words of Almighty God, we'd still be deceived by our pastors. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Praise God. That's right, yes. That's right. I used to think if I followed the pastors, I'd go to the kingdom of heaven. Now I realize the path they lead is not the right path. Amen. Amen. They're the modern Pharisees. We mustn't be deceived any longer. Yes. That's right. They are demons. But pastors have more knowledge than us. They know the Bible. They're still capable. Ridiculous. But they don't know God. They're hypocrites. They'll be cursed by God. That's yeah, right. That's God right. Curse them. Following pastors and elders is definitely dangerous. That's right. They cannot lead us into the kingdom of heaven. Right. Yes. Right. yes. right. We must reject them. We right. will. Oh, you're right. We won't be deceived anymore. We won't be. I agree. Yeah. We must reject these pastors and elders won't listen to them anymore. We must not Praise follow the their leadership. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, Almighty God has exposed the true essence of pastors and elders who resist God and deceive man. Yes. yes. Pastors and elders often misinterpret the Bible when explaining it. They rely on imagination to explain Bible knowledge and theory. Just to show off, build themselves up, and make people follow them. But they never exalt the Lord or bear witness to Him. They just want to place people under their control. Mm, yes. Yeah. Why is it? There are so many people who worship their pastors and elders and those who can explain the Bible, but so few who can magnify the Lord. What's the problem here? During Almighty God's work of judgment in the last days, many people don't investigate for the truth. They don't pray to God. They just follow the orders of their pastors and elders. He's right. Do these people believe in the Lord or their pastors? We've been following pastors, not the Lord at all. Yes. We should all look inside to see if we have done this. Yeah. Mm, I agree. Yes, he's right. Long ago, the Lord Jesus exposed the Pharisees' resistance against God. So why can't we discern when it comes to pastors and elders in the last days? Yeah. And there are still those who worship them, follow them. They've embarked on the path of resisting God. And as a result, are despised and hated by God. Where's the sense in this? Haven't they been deceived by pastors, elders for too long? Yes, yeah. he is right. Yes. Now, many who love the truth and hunger for God's appearance have seen right through the antichrist nature of religious leaders. They have left the religion and accepted Almighty God's work of the last days for the Lamb's banquet. Amen. 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 Praise God. As for those who still worship and follow these religious leaders, they will surely only encounter disasters. Yes. Yeah, this is all true. Brothers and sisters, listen, we don't have much time left. Great disaster will soon descend. Yes. 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 If we do not accept Almighty God's work in the last days, we will fall into disaster Weeping and suffering. Yes. Yeah. It's true. It's true. This is true. Yes. It is true. Brothers and sisters, disasters all around the world are getting bigger. Four blood moons have appeared, and the celestial events have occurred. Yes. It seems the destructive disasters are about to happen. Yes. Mm. Yes. 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 
the incarnate God's work of judgment starting from the house of God will be completed soon. Yes. yes. We've been so lucky to hear God's voice, to accept Almighty God's judgment in the last days. This is true rapture into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thanks be, Thanks be to God. God. Yes. To attend the marriage supper of the Lamb is our greatest blessing, surely. Amen. 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 Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Almighty God has rescued us from the deception of pastors and elders. It's true. We have abandoned the darkness to be brought before God's throne. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Recently, we read many words of Almighty God and talked of many problems that exist inside religion. Yes. We finally see our belief in God deviated only because we had worshipped and obeyed pastors and elders. Yeah. We had blind faith in the words of religious leaders. And for that reason, we treated the words in the Bible as letters and doctrines, held on to them as they were rules. Right. right. Yes. That's right. Right. We didn't understand God's words or know how to experience God's words. That's we right. didn't. That's right. We never knew to seek the truth when we prayed. And we didn't have a true communion with God. Right. I see. How was that even believing in the Lord? We called it that, but really, we were just worshiping and obeying pastors and elders. Jesus. It's absolutely, absolutely true. Right. Absolutely right. This way, without knowing it, we embarked on a path of resisting God, becoming hypocritical Pharisees. That's yes. right. Yes, I agree. Yes. That's right. Great thanks be to Almighty God. Thanks, thanks be, to, be God. to God. Today, Almighty God, Almighty God has saved us all. Amen. Amen. Almighty God's words, let us understand what believing in God is. Yes. yes. Almighty God's words, let us know the truth and gain discernment. Amen. So we no longer have blind faith in the Bible or religious pastors and elders. Yes, yes. yes. Thanks, Thanks, be Thanks be to God. God. We have broken free from the control of the letters of the Bible and religious Amen. leaders. Amen. We have broken the spell that trapped our belief in the Lord for Amen. years. Amen. 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 Those are the words I will no longer suffer under their control. Now, finally, we can come before God's throne and enjoy the supply of God's words and attend the wedding supper of the Amen. Lamb. Amen. Amen. Receiving God's personal watering, supply, shepherding. Amen. Amen. I believe we're so blessed. Yes. yes. So blessed. So, so blessed. blessed. We're too Thanks lucky. Be to God. Thanks be to God. In all my wildest dreams, I never thought we'd go before God's throne and enter into the training of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Praise, Praise God. God. This is a chance, a rare opportunity for us to be made perfect by God. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thanks be to God. We have all been exalted by God. Praise Amen. God. Amen. 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 Many thanks be to Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to Almighty God. 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 Thanks be to God's grace and mercy. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God. Thanks be
Brother Li, Yang Zhuang is up ahead. Up there are many people who believe in the Lord. Thanks be to Thanks God. Be to Thanks God. be to God. Right then, let's Good. hurry. Let's go. Let's yes. do it. While coming down to the nation of the great red dragon, God turns to face the universe and it starts shaking. Is there any place that doesn't face his judgment or live in the scourge that he unleashes? Everywhere he goes, he scatters seeds of disaster. But through it gives salvation and shows his love. God wishes to make more people know him, see him, and then revere him. They have not seen him for so long. 